Hi everyone, welcome back into uh, our studio out here in Sydney, Nebraska. What I'm going to do today for you is I'm going to paint a little old farm scene that I'm kind of putting together from a couple of photos. And what I have over here is, you can see a couple of photos I, I purchased from Adobe Stock Photos. For those of you that are in the memberships and stuff, I'll put those reference photos into the membership on the community page, or you can have those along with photo, final photos and stuff of uh, my particular painting, how I choose to do it. The the board that I'm going to be doing, this is a, a quarter inch uh, ply uh, that I really like working with. This is a birch ply, um, seven layers, very stable, very archival, wonderful surface. And then I gave it a coat of uh, canvas of the Heritage Canvas Prep Medium. And then I went about, set about drawing my lines. I was very precise here in drawing. Uh, you know, the barn and the house because I'm, I'm a real, even though I'm an all the prima and a very casual painter, I'm really uh, into that perspective is so important. Getting that perspective correct on that. And I, like I said, we're working on some drawing videos that I'll be showing into the membership here uh, starting actually next week. So we'll be putting some of those up to show you how I go about putting it together. But I want to make this kind of windy road up into the farmhouse. I want to make some uh, depth back in here. So I'm kind of joining a couple photos together. I'm going to put some depth back through here, kind of what I call the visual journey, carrying you into the farmhouse. We'll since we, you know, this is not really a great thing to do is separate two because your eye bounces between two uh, different focal areas. So we're going to create that focal area right here, right in between them, right here. And that's going to be a lot of fun. I'll show you how to do it. We're going to do it with color and technique. So for the palette that I have out here, these are the uh, Heritage Multimedia Acrylics. This is an acrylic that I designed many years ago. And... Um, it can be slowed down to give you several hours. I'm going to show you a variety of different techniques today from slowing it down. I do have the open medium that I do like from uh, Matisse Derivan. And, and, you know, you have to be careful about mixing different brands of acrylics, okay? But let me just say that I've worked with Matisse Derivan for over 20 years. As a matter of fact, they manufacture this particular paint for us down in Australia. And uh, so we know our formulas very well. We know that they are very compatible, but it's not, all the mediums are not always compatible with all kinds of acrylics because acrylic companies do different things and they design their acrylics for different types of techniques, okay? So just as a warning. Now everything, all the links are down into the video description. You'll be able to just click over onto the video description down there and see everything I'm talking about, okay? Let's get into painting because this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to start out with those that have watched me and some of my Western, some of the things I do. This is uh, a mixture I've had for years and years. It was full at one time. It's almost time to make some more. But what it is is a color called quinacridone gold, Indian yellow. Those are two uh, transparent glazing uh, colors and then I mix it up with just a, a tiny bit of glaze medium and some water and so it's very thin. I'm going to start out this painting here. I want to have this kind of foggy, misty day, real warm like on the, the seascape that I painted back there. Um, I put that fog coming in kind of there, misty fog, but I want a warm feeling to it. And so when I'm going to do that, I put a coat of this stuff on first, real thin. And you don't have to worry about it because this is, uh, you know, these colors are transparent glazing pigments. As a matter of fact, Indian yellow was one of the Dutch masters' favorite glazing yellows, how they made all their beautiful florals and stuff. They glaze that. So I'll just pop some of that on. It's a beautiful glaze. It's a nice warm uh, color now. And then I'll seal this up. So I got about enough for maybe another 20 paintings. <laughs> and then I'll have to make up a, another whole big container of it. So now that I have that out of the way, give that just a second to dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some variations, you know, of some different types of gray. Now, you've seen me many times put out some of the grays, the light grays, medium grays. And I normally have, yeah, here's one right here. So I usually have out some of these grays and stuff at this time. But this time I want to get some more color interest. So I'm going to mix my grays from a variety of colors. My main gray that I'm going to use is going to be, which is a beautiful gray. It's going to come from the medium beige and some sapphire blue. And these make beautiful. Now see, I can vary it by a real warm brown tones or I can cool it down to uh, some blues. 
here and it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful gray. And then I can lighten it and so I can lighten it with some of the medium white. So this is not why I just don't have that color out. Now, I can mix these. I mean, you know, you can get down real close and mix these colors. But I, I put out these neutrals, we call these the neutrals, the medium beige and the medium white, just because it's quick, okay? It, it's quick, but I, I never use them pure. I'm always gonna advance them a little bit. So that's a beautiful kind of gray there, maybe a touch more on the blue over here. So you see, you can make some of it just by increasing the sapphire here. You can you know get these grays that head from warm to cool really easy. And you could toss in violet and stuff like that. It's really nice. Now, I am just going to use some water in into this. So, as a matter of fact, I'll just leave that other color in there, and I'm going to just thinly wash some of this over again over this. Let this start to get a little bit wet, but it's okay. From here. And I'm going to thinly wash this right over the painting here. I love that, those colors, you know, the, those cool and warms there coming through, mixing up. So this gray, so I'm going to get some of this real model, the grays, and see, I want this. See this streaks of color through there? That's what I'm looking for. I'll grab some more water with this right in through here. We'll toss some of that in. So I don't want to mix it up real well. Now, you know, and as we, we're going to let this dry, completely dry, and since we're all acrylics here, it won't take, any, it won't take too long here, but uh, we'll let that completely dry. And I want to start out with this real modeling of color. In Ala Prima, which I'm going to follow mostly the Ala Prima techniques today, and we'll take them into this landscape. In, in Ala Prima, shadows, usually you leave your shadows transparent, and then you opaque your highlights. That's what you want to do, especially in a landscape, okay? And I've mentioned you that in florals and stuff like that. Uh, and so into some of these shadows that I'm gonna be putting out over here, I wanna see some of those warm tones coming through because shadows are not always cool. In landscapes and stuff, sometimes we make, and it's just like in portraiture, sometimes you make those shadows on the face very warm. So we'll, we'll put this glaze through. Now I'm just gonna, we just wipe back some of this right here and uh, give myself a nice working area. And I'm going to go to one of my favorite uh, brushes here, which is the three quarter inch that has just a bit of paint from my last landscape in it, but that's okay. Yeah, it's you can take this stuff out real easy with uh, the hand cleaner that I've showed you on several videos. But I like my brushes when I paint landscape. I don't like new brushes, I like old brushes. So you, you go through and you pull out all your old brushes because I like the edge to fracture. I don't like new brushes that give it. Now these are the fusion brushes and again, all the links are in, were, um, in by the uh, video description. So I'm gonna take some burnt sienna, a little pine green. These are some of my landscape favorite colors to put in right away. And I'm going to thin this out, and I'm going to use some extender here. Extender is extender medium. Extender is thinner. The open medium, they both slow down the drying time of the paint, which I'm not really interested in right now because I want stuff to dry. But this is the extender medium. But what it also does is it makes the paint very slippery, and that's why I like to use it. So I'm going to come right up over in here and see this. I get a little bit of transparency and slippery nature to the paint that I can just put some marks in and start some of the feeling of the, um, you know, what is gonna be back here, background trees and stuff like that here. And I wanna, I wanna do it. We're gonna put some more sky in as well. But I wanna do this. I wanna leave these fractured marks here. That's very, very much a la prima, very much beautiful, whimsical, and it'll give you a lot of depth. So we'll just put some of this down. We're gonna put the sky back over this. I'm gonna work this several times, but uh, we'll start this. Let's put just a touch more green into that here as we, so I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna mark, there's gonna be a tree back behind this house. I like to, and then, so I'm using the flat of it here, and then I'll roll over and just punch out some edges here with the corner of the brush to make it look a, a bit different. Now we're gonna put more sky in that and soften some of that out. But this does start some nice contrast for us. Back here 
in the back, let's take a bit of our gray, a bit of green, some burnt sienna. And again, we're going to be putting on a lot of colors, but since I'm thinking shadows right now, backgrounds, shadows, and everything, I want to think thin. You want to put everything in here thin. Now, I can use this, which will be fractured, but I'm going to think about the back edge back here, the back of the, the painting back there. So I want to make it, I don't want to have as many edges to it, so I'm going to use the bristles of the brush this time. And I'll pull some of that color through here. So that'll be some of the ground. Let's just lighten that just a bit. And just, so I want to, I want it though a little bit smoother so it recedes. Edges are so important. So see how this edge here recedes, this edge comes forward, especially with the drippiness of it there. It dripping a little bit. That's how transparent I am. And then I'm going to take, let's add a bit of our gray to some of this green and a bit of the uh, burnt sienna. And let's just make an idea, a little bit more gray. Now we're going to go over this with gray. So you know, I'm just, I, I, you don't just have to be close. I want to create a little variation here for some of those trees right in there. We'll just tap through that, but I don't want to get too rough. So I want to make a background area back here and I want to soften that out just a bit, those edges. So I'll have some back trees back here. Here's going to be the back field and a few trees and stuff back there. So put some horizontals, some verticals that'll help you with that. Okay. Let's come forward here. Now we'll make the shadow just a touch more opaque, not completely opaque, still transparent, but we'll use a bit more paint and this will help us. We'll have a little pathway there. This will help us here pull some of the the edges here forward here give us uh, what we call pulling you right into that part of the painting that's what I want actually I want to come right between the two so here is a real good spot to have some of that contrast we can bring that right up over here to the barn as well here we'll slope this just a bit and let that fade away going back there now we'll go back to some transparency so a little more extender medium and get some nice fractured edges here. Fracture means this, breaking it like that. That's fracturing it, okay? Smoothing it, so if I take a little extender and if I use, so I use dragging more so the bristles here by the ferrule hit that. That's what gives you the, the fracturing edge. If I use more of the bristles on this, you see I get a nice soft look. And so you can get a soft look into a fractured look. And that's how you control some of the visual, what we call edges. And if you have, those of you the beginners, um, edges. Start studying edges. Start watching videos out there where artists are talking about their edges. Controlling your edges is what really makes the difference between a professional artist and a beginner or, or a, you know, an artist that, uh, you know, does, well, basically doesn't do it professionally. Those edges, understanding your edges. Try to under, try to start studying those edges because those are the big things. Those are the big things. So let's, Put in a little more color. I want a little more fracturing right in here. And see how that fracturing of some of these edges really draws your eye in through here, see? And uh, we're gonna put a lot of color, a lot of uh, differences right back in here. And uh, really pull your eye right in here and everywhere else will go a little bit softer. We'll let it diminish down here as it goes this way. And then up into the front up here, a matter of fact, let's just take a little water because we want this to kind of dry. And we'll just wash right over using just the bristles of the brush here because I want the viewer's eye to blow through this area and get up to the house, get up towards the hair. And it's, you know, you're going to, we're going to lead the viewer into here. So I don't want to see if I come down here, let me just show you visually. So you can see that. If I come down here and fracture an edge down here like this, I pull you away from there, see? So I don't want to do that. I want to keep my edges here. I can have some nice colors, 
but I want to keep my, my expressions here softer, softer color expressions here. And sometimes I'll do this, you know, with that big, larger brush, that fusion brush is just really nice. I can get lots of nice coloring and stuff in there. I can put the colors up here into the foreground and uh, then soften them out. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit here for that path, but I wanna get some streaks of green, some streaks of the, of the burnt sienna in here. We'll get some grays, you know, it's, so it, there's a plan to it. You just don't jump into that painting with here. I'm watching my edges, watching my color. Where am I putting those edges in contrast here to draw you into this particular part of the painting? So the whole job here, let's grab a little water. The whole job of the front of this painting is to pull your eye into the house and barn that we're gonna have right over here. Get rid of that, I got a edge there on the board. So we're just gonna drag that right into that little uh, driveway basically right in there. And I don't want to have, I'm going to have a lot of uh, different brush movements and stuff like that. So I don't want to have it too uh, horizontal here. So I'm just going to break this up just a bit softly with some more calligraphy. This is what we call the calligraphy, the marks, the brush marks here. Some, some nice horizontals and stuff like that, but all different kinds of colors in there. Now, Let's uh, take a little bit of our burnt sienna and green, a little bit more to the green here. And let's just add a bit of that right in here. Move that color. So see, I'll pull it one way. I'll use the edges of the brush here to get some variation, some differences and stuff like that. So a little more color over there. And, you know, we're going to work this a lot. We're going to work this several times here. And I don't want to get too many edges back here, but I, what I want is this modeling of the color. In here, let's go a little bit of yellow in with some of this green. We'll pop in a little different color right here. And we can have touches of it over here, but I want to keep it where this is what's really going to grab your the viewer's eye right in there. So we'll get some of these these bits of some of this green and stuff in here as well. A little different color. I'm going to be doing this a lot, guys, so, uh, you know. But it helps you start to really see where it's called leading in. Lead, we're going to lead the viewer into the landscape here. Let's take some soft green and gray and restate. Let's go a little bit lighter. And I'll be putting the gray back on here, the sky, gray sky, back on in just a minute. And we'll take care of some of this, but we'll pull some of that color through like that. Soften that way back there into the back, real soft. Maybe just a mark or two of some of that. The eye leads in, that's what I want. Those trees that are going to be back there. A little bit of the shadow where the trunks of the trees and stuff come down there again real soft and real transparent here and just lift up some and that'll give you an idea here of some of the you know the movement of the trees here lots to do but so now here part of our plan is going to be coming into here keeping lots of color movement. I want this to kind of dry up now uh, because I'll keep moving it and keep moving it. So I'll let this kind of dry up. While that's drying up, we'll go start the barn and the house here. So the barn. So the barn that I have over here has kind of a greenish roof. I do like that. So does the house. Kind of a greenish uh, roof here. Let's take a, a burnt sienna and some beige and some of our burnt uh, green burnt sienna beige maybe a little bit of blue and just lean it slightly to the green side here 
Okay, then we'll lighten it up. And this is where I'll use that medium white instead of that white. I'm gonna save white. This is the one thing is, white's a real dangerous color in a lot of paintings. Those of you who paint roses with me, I tell you, white is something we save for the very last of the painting. And a lot of your landscape painters are gonna say the same thing. So for my beginners, what I do, that medium white's really important. And I always tell them, don't paint with any white until the end of the painting. Use medium white. Put out medium white and use it, and it'll help you a lot. So let's just, uh, I love these Gabriel roofs. I had a bar. Our house out in Pennsylvania has a barn with the roof just exactly like it. Well, it doesn't have holes in it, but we'll drop that, uh, that roof, that barn right in there like that. And the top part here could go a touch lighter. So let's just go ahead and state that. We'll just add a little more medium white here to it. Here, this is just my three quarter inch brush here. And so I'll pull that down right there on that. So we'll leave a little bit of color mark there so we can kind of see a bit of the, the difference there on the barn. Let's um, put in some burnt sienna, maybe a touch of our blue. And, you know, into that green a little bit more. And a good color to put into that is violet. Maybe even a darker bit, a little bit of that violet. That's a pretty color right there. And you can use a small brush, but, you know, in the initial parts of the painting, I like to use a big brush as much as possible because I get a lot more color variation. So I'll push that in and look at how that draws your eye there. We can see right away that's a pretty good color that's going to help us in this painting to draw the viewer right in there. Yeah, that works really well. Let's uh, model some of this into this, and we'll come over here to the, uh, to the house here, and push, see, I, as I'm pushing this on, I'm using really light pressure because I have a lot of, see, I have a lot of colors in my, in my brush and if you don't if you don't see a lot of colors go model it up so you do see a lot of colors get some of these colors that's the the, the best thing that i can say to anybody about putting it don't over mix your colors on your palette you know just model them together which means you you kind of uh, touch them on your palette and uh until you, they start to incorporate, but you can still see, and I don't know if you can see it really well, but you can still see some of those, those beautiful colors coming out. And if you look out over here, that's really kind of some of the darks there. Matter of fact, we can take some of those real pretty, let's grab a bit of that violet and blue. That is right into that. It's real pretty little shadow. And uh, we can streak a bit of that through here. Just touch a little bit. Don't pull big long ones. Just start, you know, think of that, your brush more of a sketching kind of motion. You're just kind of sketching here. You don't want to just put down big stripes of color. You want, you want to think of these as little accents, little, uh, little touches to kind of break up the, the coloring on the roof here just a bit, see? So just little marks that just add so much interest. Let's touch in over here some of that slightly darker right into the roof a bit. And we're gonna do the same thing over on the, uh, you know, on the sides of the houses and stuff like that. Well, uh, you know, we'll put the edge of the roof here to sit the underneath that has a little different color. There's a bit lighter, so we'll lighten this up. A bit lighter right up over here onto this one. And right now it'll get oh, a touch lost. And there's a small little one I did over here. It'll get a touch lost in some of that movement that we have there. And that's okay. You know, we'll fix, we'll fix some of that. Matter of fact, if you, if you want, you can take a little burnt sienna, a little green, something totally different here, and just push some of that color, especially that burnt sienna, playing up against that. A little more color here, right into there. And that'll help that house and stuff come forward here. Leave just a few marks here. But really, we need that right in here. You can see how some of that movement here, see? Just uh, 
adds an awful lot, that color, that movement adds an awful lot to the painting here. But it's going to be done a lot. We're going to do this several times. And we'll build it real heavy in here, lights, darks, all kinds of stuff going on. And then uh, we'll soften it up towards the front and we'll lead the viewer into our painting here. Grab a bit more of this going on. Right up in there. We'll lead that viewer. See how you're... Right now, I'm kind of sliding this way a little bit. And it's all color and movement, right? So what happens? So I'm kind of a bit heavy there. So I'm going to balance that out. Put a bit more heavy and some edges and some movements right out in here. And notice how your eye now comes back this way just a bit. And the more dark, the more edge dark. Let's put a little blue and burnt sienna, which is a beautiful dark color that I put in right in through here. See, that pulls your eye even more that way. Now that's a little too dark, but um, it's okay. I'm a professional. I can fix it. <laughs> you know, just take some burnt sienna and just go right through that and look at you get that nice warmth here. What is that there? I don't know. It could be some kind of bush or something there. We don't know yet. We haven't finished anything yet. <clears throat> so but we're going to paint. And let's just join those together with just a bit of that dark tone traveling through there. Now your eye, boom, goes right through there. One of the things you don't want to do is put that dark back there, see? That'll just destroy your whole look that you're, you're kind of developing there. Is that dry? Oh, just about. Just about playtime. So we're going to take some... I'll take some extender, and again, I'll do this because... Um, I want the colors to slide. I like extender causing my colors to slide when I use more of a glazing type of technique. So I'm going to take a bit of my of my burnt sienna, excuse me, of my medium beige and some blue and some uh, medium white. We'll make up that kind of grayish color here again. A blue gray, that's kind of a pretty color. It's a little, just a touch dark. So we'll Add some more medium white, a little bit more extender here. I want this grayish day, and we'll come right down. And I hit my roof there, and that's okay. And I'll actually paint over the edge just a bit. And I don't want to lose all of, all of that color I put in there at the very beginning. See how you can just barely see some of it coming through. That's that nice movement that I want in this painting. So use your color thin. Make sure you get to get that extender in there. Let's paint right into that tree. Right into that. That's going to help it recede. I'm going to go right through my chimney, right up the edge of that roof. Right there. Push that gray right into those trees there just a bit because we're Add them back. Now this is how you get beautiful edges and that real dreamy kind of look to a landscape is you paint your edges back and forth and back and forth a couple of times. Sometimes on big commission paintings I'll do that five or six times and then you come back and you can add the details but you paint those real dreamy misty edges there first. See so that gives you really kind of a nice look there. Let's take a little more medium white Maybe medium white and a touch of blue, so the color just a little different. And just pull some of that through here, just as little differences. I did that on that, on that, um, on that, back that side. <laughs> Sometimes I get turned, the cameras are reversed. On that one back there that I really liked. And uh, so we'll do that. Here and see, I like these kind of. I call these the dreamy edges here. I like that kind of stuff right in there, like that. You pick up that and you get that by painting back and forth and back and forth. So let's take just a touch of that color out of our brush here for a minute. And I do like that too because in into my water now, I've just totally contaminated that water. But that's also the color, main color of our painting. So as I grab that water, I'm actually adding stuff uh, to, you know, for interest and stuff back in there. Now, rather than cleaning up some of this stuff and going, I'm just going to work right here onto a dirty palette. Since I want a real 
uh, kind of a dreamy painting here, I'm going to work into dirty color. Okay, so we'll do that. Now, I'm going to first just take some of my green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna. Here, let's grab some dark, model that right up in through here, and we'll come right out here. This is a smaller number 10 fusion here. And I'm just going to suggest some additional movement of the of the trees out through here. Now I I, I do want to keep this color changing, so I'm gonna change that a bit. I want to leave some areas here that uh, you see that kind of gray sky through. We call those got sky holes into a tree. Here, so I want to leave some of that there, like that, and I just, I absolutely love doing this, creating this. This took me a while though, you know, because I started out into the arts as a decorative painting, and we make trees, boop, 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 just tapping here. What I'm doing when I'm doing that is changing and moving my brush. That's the biggest thing. And, you know, in decorative painting, we learned lots of easy ways just to make trees. And in, when I started studying the fine arts, you, you try not to repeat brush marks. You try to constantly change your brush marks here. So here I'm modeling this up. We'll add a few strikes of the greens and yellows, burnt siennas and yellows here. So you can see some, and right into those very wispy edges here. Think of the tree growing out, making little wispy edges there. And uh, just out like that here. And we'll push some right up here. Use different parts of your brush here. Create some different marks. And if you, if you make a mistake, don't go wiping it out. Just paint it out with sky. You know, that's what I always tell people. Don't wipe it out. Just paint it out with sky. And go back and forth between your, your colors here as, you, as you're putting some of those on. Go, you know, you may want to touch back into sky and take some of that back out. Paint those edges and stuff back and forth. But the big thing is model the colors. And this may, something like this may take you two or three times modeling colors like this to uh, you know, get the look that you really want to have there into that tree. So I'm getting, you can see some of the colors that I'm getting there, and uh, I like that. I'm gonna make just a bit darker green, more of a shadowy green, just to keep some of that color, especially as I get down here towards my focal area of the painting. I'll put some of that in there, but see, it's really cool along there, and so when I used to think when I get a large area of cool, I like to break it with a, like a warm, like a little burnt sienna. And look at the interest that that little warm adds there to that side there. So, you know, I'm constantly, you know, for years I didn't think temperature, and then, you know, now I'm a temperature painter. I'm, th I'm looking at my warms and my cools all the time in my painting here. Trying to get these uh, these edges and the temperatures of the colors, Sh seeing some shadows and stuff like that. And let's just take that big brush, pull through just a bit, pull through some of that. And I have just that touch of water in my big brush. Remember, I rinsed it, so it's going to move through my my uh, painting here really easy. It's almost like you're blending with an oil or pulling something through with an oil. Um, it just softens out some of those edges. Just a big brush, especially the fusion brush that I use here. This is a fusion and it has just a touch of water in it. Some of this is dry, but that water will reactivate just a bit and soften some of that out. Right. Okay. So here we go to here. Now let's bring just a bit of that burnt sienna, darker color right in here. Drop that front edge. A little bit of burnt sienna, look at that burnt sienna in there. 
So you see just a touch of that. That's the beautiful thing about, you know, painting architecture, like, you know, those of you that painted that church with me and stuff, the uh, getting some of the different colors, you know, painting it many times, getting some of the different colors into that, uh, into that building. That's what it takes. Now, let's come in here. Let's take a nice modeled, let's take our yellow, yellow oxide. We'll take that right down here. We'll mix it up with some of our beige, the medium beige to keep it really soft. Here, we'll mix some of these colors up here. We'll push yellow back in again and again. And, you know, it has this lap siding here on this. And see, so you got a little bit of green coming out of my brush. So that's okay. And I'm going to paint it basically like this. I don't want to lose all my drawing, but most of the time I do. I'm going to want to reinforce this edge right here because this is really where I want the viewer to see some of the stuff right up here. So I'm going to pull some horizontals and some verticals and reinforce that edge. It means I want to get that a nice edge right there because I want the viewer here. This edge I'm not really all that worried about, but that one edge that's there, I want to keep the viewer I want it nice and clean. Let's put a little bit of burnt sienna in that dark color again. I want a nice edge here. A little bit fractured is okay. But I'm gonna, and see, I just pulled over the edge here and I'll come back with a bit of the house color, a little heavier again, and maybe take it off just a bit here and there. But I wanna, I wanna play, I'm, we're gonna paint quite a bit this edge. This is gonna be a very important edge into our painting. Here I'll drag the brush and I'll get a different look here. That's going to be a very important edge of the painting because that's going to pull our eye into here. So back up over here, I don't want to make it perfect. What I want to do over here is just kind of whisper the edge in and let it just kind of fade away. So you're going to see the edge of the house back there, but it's not going to be perfect. Now we have to cool that over there too. So let's grab a little bit of our blue and a little bit of our violet. Here. I like that blue because it makes it more gray. Blue and violet it makes it a bit darker, a little bit cooler color here. And um, you can you can see it's not quite exactly the same. I'm a, you have to look to that shadow kind of color that's there, and that's really close. That's close enough for me to continue with this because I'm going to change that color and. I'm going to be just a touch more transparent. So I added just a touch of extender to this or water, either one here. Just a bit of that color and change it just a touch. Do something, mix a little yellow in it or a little more beige or a little more violet. Change the color ever so slightly there. Just pull that through. That's kind of nice there. And, um, Let's grab a bit more yellow, burnt sienna, a bit of our blue and violet. Oh, that's kind of pretty good. Maybe a little bit more of a, just a real dark kind of bluish cool color. That's pretty, but it's kind of great from all the colors that I'm mixing there. So it's kind of great. I know I'm just almost completely off camera. You should see that color. It's amazing. <laughs> so here we go. It's kind of a real great violet and we can use that uh, underneath the house here on this side because we'll put some violets into the especially in and along the shadow line here we'll pull some of the violets violet will be a nice complementary color to the to what's going on in the um, in the uh, the house itself to the yellow of the house so we'll put a nice cool violet real real uh, casual over here. Let's take a bit of the green. So you see my edges here are almost blurring all together, which is what I want. I want those edges to almost blur together. Now if the colors on your palette start to dry up, you can mix a little extender or you do what I do. You know, let them dry up because we're acrylic painters and I like to uh, work stuff. But see how this is getting sticky here. So I can add some extender to it and that would loosen it all up and make it paintable again. But sometimes I'll take that sticky color when it gets real sticky like this. And there's a couple ways. One is I'd like to use diffusion 
as this starts to get sticky and I know I've got some highlights and stuff to put on the roof and stuff. See, I like to use this and see the fracturing marks that I get into those colors on the roof and I like that. The other way that I do it is I do it with my knife. So I'll, and I'm gonna use my knife several places here on this one and then the knife can pull through. Now the big thing I don't like about the knife is that you can wipe out a lot of stuff by having it a little too heavy like I just did there. But you can put it on with a knife and then come back like this and break it up. The thing is, the interest of your painting is gonna come from these small little movements of this color, you know, moving through your painting. That's where the interest is gonna come from. So, you know, and just working it back and forth. Let's take a little bit of the Medium white and a bit more yellow will lighten, work this up a bit. Now, there's a couple of ways to do some of this. This is a small bristle. This is the uh, same thing as our company with the bristle, a little bit of bristle. And you don't see me paint. Whoa, don't touch that color, Dave. We want medium white, a little bit of our neutrals, and some yellow, and the bristle. Also, laying that down onto its side right here, like I said, I really want to develop that edge. But see the bristle, laying it down, you'll get some fracturing. If you want a smoother stroke, lean up to the bristle. And But you can see I get some of that fracturing that's right there that I want to work with here. So we're going to have some fracturing here. Now make sure as you pull this way that you're pulling in parallel to the roof line. That's that... Uh, that's that uh, perspective we want to keep throughout the painting here. So we're going to build it here, and so you can see that. Now, for those windows that are here, we'll go grab some dark. Let me grab some of my extender, some of those blues, little burnt siennas. Model so it's not perfect. I love that burnt sienna to come out. And uh, let's just grab the idea. And, and I don't want to be absolutely perfect, so I'll just let some of it be, you know, some of it, um, you know, fracture and not, but I don't want it to appear wonky. I don't want, I, I want to keep the perspective nice. And so usually what I'll do is I'll put in one really nice angle and then I'll let the rest of it just kind of fade away there. So we'll touch that in. Here, let's do the same over here, following our perspective. And see, I like that slightly sticky paint. It kind of fractures there and gives you a real nice look. And let some of those other colors come through there. That works pretty nice here. And we'll do the same over here, even though this one is kind of light over there. We'll keep that. Matter of fact, we can copy that, not copy that emulate that photo a little closer there. Just put a little medium white into that. We'll just grab a bit of that right in there like that and that. And uh, then it, it appears slightly more bluish over there. So we'll just add a bit of the blue. But really what I want to do is get that violet. I want to work that violet in. I like to go to the violet more to the blue basically too because it's a, it's a nice complement to what's going on in the painting or what's going to go on into this painting. So we'll attach that into some of those. And again, I'm a big advocate for carrying color. So I'll work some of that in, especially up underneath this roof line right there. Work some of that violet, little touches into some of the other parts of that house there just like that okay so that's got that now i'm going to turn around and i'm going to be basically doing the barn the same way pulling some nice uh, verticals here and this is a nice vertical area here and some horizontals here i'll base that in so we won't make this huge huge long i'll show you a couple minutes of it but the barn itself is going to be more of a, a gray so i'm going to pull this gray down misty this one will become more yellow and uh, so basically your sapphire your medium beige some of your light um, medium white and you know vary that just a little bit 
because we're going to be adding more color. I'll base that in, work that in, and then we'll come back and we'll continue on, okay? So I'll see you in just a minute. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so I put some of that in and you saw me work the colors. Now, just like we did on the church, the southern church that I painted 
on the channel here, we're going to work several of those colors back and forth until we create that illusion of the siding, okay? So we'll do that. But um, <clears throat> I want to come right back here and take some of my green bird sienna, some of my nice misty colors here. And uh, just with a little bristle here, just real soft little color and just, and it's dry back here. So I'm going to do what we call scumbling which is just drying it with that nice stiff bristle. You could also use your fusion, but the bristle will give me a little different look. And push some of the edges here to the, uh, the backs of those trees back there. I'm gonna do it a few times here. So this is, you know, I let it, I like to work on these on dry as much as possible and just put in light, small touches of color like this. And, I'll put in some different greens and just a little bit, but just, and that's what's going to give it a lot of interest to it. So this is this the the uh, one. This is the one uh, bristle um, filbert in the line. And I, I, when we designed this one, we designed it so it has a real fine point. See that real fine point that it goes there, and I use that also for drawing. I do a lot of drawing with it. And it gives you a rough but also a nice line. So I'm going to take some of this gray that I used on the, uh, and just a bit more burnt sienna on the barn, and I'm going to move it over. Let's even add some open medium. Open medium will slow the drying time. I'm not really interested in that, but it's going to make it a little bit more transparent and so I can work some more colors on it. Let's come right back up over here, and uh, I'm going to push the trunk of a tree right down here. See, this is what I like. See, I'll, I'll go a little flatter as I get towards the bottom of that there. And uh, we'll bend it around a little bit here as well. But I can just use the chisel of it there and just kind of draw around here. Push and pull and uh, build that edge of that tree right up there like that. And that takes the color from the barn back over here, peering over into, into this side. And then I'll put a few other little branches or some other ones, let those kind of disappear back into there. So we'll get a few more trees. So I'll work those edges like that. But I'm always kind of, of thinking, let's take some more of this right up over here. So you can also use this, use the edge like this and kind of scumble sketch it. I call it scumble sketching, where you can pull the edge and draw this out here and just whispers of it. We're not quite sure exactly how much of these trees will, will let show up. So we'll keep it very simple for right now. Very, very simple. Okay, so we'll draw that. Now you can, just like the trees, the eucalyptus that I painted on that southern church, we can come in and, uh, you know, we can add some other colors and stuff. We have to figure the light. Light's coming in here for the front. So let's take a little medium white, just tap it right into here, and we can use that right up over here onto this, the right side of this tree and tap a bit of interest into that. What will really make it go is the shadows. And let's go over with burnt sienna and green. And you saw, like when I did in here, I put some violet, some purples right up in through here. And then I took some of it out with some green and violet. And I love to do that in a painting. Let's grab a little blue with the violet and that burnt sienna. And we'll just scumble a little bit of the shadow there. So the big thing is, you know, when your edges, you're going to leave everything right now just soft. So you can drag some of this back and create the shadow of that tree there. Just create everything soft, soft edges to it, and we'll bring out some more in just a little bit, okay? So now <clears throat> I have that. Now I'm going to come back, work onto this house, and I'll use the same type of thing here. Now inside those windows are lighter. Now this is where I will take my medium white. We can use probably just medium white right now. We'll model some of the other colors into it so it's not just pure medium white. And I love to use these little tongue depressors. You can buy them, you know, you can get like 
5,000 of them for like six bucks. And I use them for all different kinds of things. If I'm gonna do a lot of detail, I'll angle them and I'll use those to pull here. This is the sharpened edge of a bone that, uh, you know, the Dutch, I was showing some of the old techniques that Dutch do and stuff. And so you can use this really to, to draw or scrape. You, you scratch and you can scratch back and make, you know, perfect lines. And you can see it start to slowly happen there. But I like to also use them if I'm doing a fine little detail work here like this and just run my brush right against the edge there just like that just so I can so I try to keep it you know so I get a little bit of that light color there and it keeps it from getting too wonky here so you know you have on there you can put in just a bit I'll put in a touch and I'll go back and forth with some of this uh, you know this this shadow and light but uh, and building some of these edges of the um, of the windows and roof and stuff like here, and you want to have them here, just uh, kind of soft edges. But now the other thing is a, a lot of and a lot of artists do it is they'll use their knife, and I'm, you know my job here is show you guys all different kinds of ways. But you can put a little bit of paint up here at the edge of your knife, and you can just slowly roll over the knife. Find it till you start to move that little bit of paint. Now, what is also, uh, and you can see it puts on just a nice fractured little edge of light. And that's what we want. You know, I really, uh, those of you that haven't painted landscapes, I mean, one of my favorite landscape painters, and we lost him, he passed away this last year, Richard Smith. He, and this is what the kind of look that he does, that he developed, that he designed. And he has a couple of books on all of Prima and a couple of videos on landscapes. Beautiful stuff, uh, very, very creative, creative artist, and we lost a, a lot of our creativity, but edges and stuff like that are so important. So see, I can just kind of creep in a little bit and draw some of those edges. And this is where I take the, the, uh, the most time is just put it in little touches like that. So I'll be doing that fixing that up and working just like that. But I like this brush also. Let's go a little more yellow, a little more um, medium white, model this stuff together. Don't mix it up real well, model it. And uh, we'll pull through again. Now we're gonna pull through some light and then we gotta pull through some shadow. But this is that lap siding, so we've gotta pull a lot of horizontals here. And see, I can move my brush over from the from the um, flat to the chisel here to create some of these look just like we did with that church here to create some of that looks and sometimes I'll do it with the bristle you see me also do it with this fusion I like to kind of mix my tools up sometimes so I get some different looks here but we do want to keep it kind of in line there with the other thing so we're slowly going to build it here and we'll drop some of this down. You might restate some of your uh, shadows there as well. As we come around the corner, we'll take a little burnt sienna, a little blue, cool that down, maybe even a touch of the, the violet into that, which I like to have. And we'll drop uh, some of that in here. Now we'll also go back and restate some of our shadows again. So I go back and forth and back and forth painting this and see so you can leave a little space and it starts to look more and more like the the last on the sides of the of the house there and you slowly slowly develop it put it in little thing because that's where it's going to keep those in that interest slowly slowly put this in build it change the tone just a bit put in a little more shadow Put that back, run some of that right up underneath that roof line, which I'll be straightening again, but I like this brokenness to it. Now you see that window that got right there when I did that, that's a little bit wonky there. So, you know, and you can either, you can use the small tools to assist or just use like your, the edge of your uh, bristle here, like this one is so fine so that you can, it's made for drawing so that you can come in and and just kind of clean it up there without without putting in too much of a definite edge so you still you still get some nice receding parts of your painting here which we want to 
preserve. So I'm going to do that here. And uh, then I'm going to uh, switch over. I'm going to do this a couple times and then restate some of my shadows back through here. Now, sometimes I'll take, let's take like a yellow, right, with a little blue and burnt sienna here. Okay, so it's a darker yellow, almost like a raw sienna. And I'll run that through in a few places here just to get that color work. And, you know, sometimes pull a little horizontal there too. But see, that changes it up. And I'll, you know, this is the interest part of your painting, especially right in here. And so, you know, doing that a few times, building that up and getting those small little color variations, maybe, you know, like a, a little touch of the violet here and blue, just real soft, you know, pulling through sometimes, maybe right up around you know, the shadow part of where the window is and stuff like that. See, that just adds a little bit more to your colors here, your color workings of your, of your, uh, the farmhouse here, okay? And I'll build that up. And then I'm going to go through and do that right over here as well. Just like we did when we talked about on that Southern Church, okay? And uh, so I'll show you a few minutes more time. So basically the barn is the blues, the bur and the uh, medium beige, which makes that gray, lighten it up. You can slide it to the yellows. You can slide it to the violets. Get all those colors in there, working it back and forth, okay? Alrighty, I'll see you guys in just a minute.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, so you saw me put in a little bit of the details, working back and forth, some of the color, and I took some of the gray color and pushed it over here into the house, some of the yellow color, pushed it over here into the barn, go back and forth. We'll, we'll do more crossing of these colors, keeping it very uh, light and airy, put a little bit of lighter movement up into the sky, I like that, with just little touches of blue into the background working on those kind of trees. I do want to put a light strike, so I'll come down here, and I have not used any white in the painting yet. We do have that to go to if we want. I'm gonna put a light strike of a lighter uh, green, yellow green and into the back back here, um, kind of like a, a sloping of the hill. Now that might, well, it is a little bit gray. It will dry down too. And I'm not afraid to try a color and you know, paint over it. That's where you get a lot of interest. But if you if you do paint over something, uh, you know, try to leave a little bit of that that co that first color. That just adds interest. You know, if you make a mistake, use it. Use it to your advantage. So, let's just put a little bit of that. That helps pull your eye back into here. Shows I could develop a, a bit more up into the front, but uh, like that. Now, so that was the yellow and the green and some medium white. Let's go just yellow and the green, maybe a little bit of Hansa into that. So we get a little bit uh, lighter. And let's push some of that. Don't take out all your shadow. Let's push some of that right back up in here. Just uh, cause we're gonna do a lot of this back and forth here. You know, watch your edges. You're gonna build some edges here this time there. We'll push that. Now, what we'll do is we'll take that right into some of that other softer stuff and then right in here, somewhere in here, we'll put a couple strokes of the, the medium value there. Let's go, let's brown that up just a bit. Maybe a little bit of open medium, not to keep it wet, but to cause a bit of the transparency there. Yeah, that, that looks kind of nice. And uh, let's take a bit of the green, burnt sienna, bit of that yellow here and we hold our brush this is where we get those fractured edges real flat this is the fusion fusion number 10 flat and that see it gives and this is what you want some of that that interest that goes through there we'll let a bit of that just a bit of those tones there but it kind of looks like a back hill back there see that's kind of what i wanted let's lighten that just a bit you can go in and out of the tree line back there as well so you just don't have a straight tree line. Let this color kind of disappear back there into the trees a bit. And that just gives you a little bit more, a little bit more interest. Now, let's model some yellows and some greens here and carry some of that right up here into the front here. We'll just let that slide right over our shadows here. And, you know, I'm going to be doing these types of strokes several times here to create the ground, the grass, the movement here. And a uh, little bit of open medium here. Let's get some of that nice green. Pull that through. Maybe um, a bit of blue into that too. Cooler. Some, some variations of it. Yeah, now that might be a little too cool, but boy, it looks nice. See, we'll just pull some of that through and just keep that nice blurry a la prima. I love it when this is dry because see, I just smear it out there and it looks great. Let's, let's go to a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of our uh, medium beige into that. So we come over here, yeah, we'll... Brown that up just a bit, a bit here. So I use the flat of the brush to get those nice flat fractured edges. And I'm gonna use the paper towel here, just working back and forth. So I want color in through here. I wanna pull the viewer right up here with color. Sometimes I'll get real brave and we know we're gonna have that path right up here. So I'll push that right up here and let some of those marks, you know, just like, like Smith did, just let those marks. He was such a creative master. And uh, get those in, right in here. 
and just the power that uh, you know you can let some of your strokes and stuff have you know um, what I tell my students is I don't like to I don't necessarily copy some of the masters or anything like that what you do is you study you paint them you try you know paint some of his exercises and stuff and then let his brush change your brush let yourself come out but don't copy it just you know let his brush change your brush let my brush what I do here let it kind of change your brush here and try new things so see I'll build some paint some right over those violets which which give you such a beautiful and see if I come back right away with some maybe some light some of those yellows here just drag that right up over that so you'll get a lot of I don't want to do big long ones but just little and the big thing is when you're doing something like this you break up smaller little marks you want to get a lot of color here so I'll tap the the edge sometimes I'll leave a horizontal in there um, you know a nice horizontal look to it because that helps you with your linear perspective as you looking at your landscapes too. Linear perspective is setting the the planes here of of you know your buildings and stuff. Push it around a bit like there's going to be some uh, bushes and stuff like that around there. Let's take you know vary your greens. Have some green, some beautiful, some beautiful uh, pine green out here showing up there it's just really pretty maybe a bit of the yellows out there on it here as well so you can put in a, like a a bush or something like that there and then what really helps it more than anything else take a little burnt sienna a little bit of blue come back over here where my darks were sometimes a little violet maybe a little green and use that shadow underneath it to help place it on the ground so you know make sure you preserve some of those shadows to help things stay onto the ground you need those to help stay grounded here but now see that color is if we keep this all soft that color is just pulling you right in through here I could probably lighten the barn and stuff a bit put some other little uh, things going on here and work some more ground like this back and forth some nice make it a nice bushy lawn so you don't have to worry about mowing it and but see I'm I'm not mixing up real well and you use that fusion that's what this fusion is designed to do this kind of stuff it's just fantastic soft bristles and uh, you know, and you pull now as I come forward, I'll probably go to a larger fusion and uh, I'll probably do a larger fusion down in here. Not as much work so that your eye draws into here. A little bit more different than what we're normally used to doing, doing all of the stuff up into the front. But Smid and some of those, and his look is this drawing in look, which is just amazing, draws you in to the painting. And um, yeah, he has a a real good look that way and I like it and so I try it don't always paint everything like that just it's just a wonderful practice for you so I'll add some more beiges and stuff right back through here as I come forward we'll use up a bit of this color and we'll just pull some of it down we're gonna do more just pull some of this down work some of the colors that's what I'm gonna do and so as I'm using the flat of the brush here, I'll use the bristle of the brush. I'll probably go to a larger brush so I don't have as many marks right there. Go to a larger brush up there in the front, okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to push some color in here. And let's see where we are. We've got to get going. So I'll push some color in here, and I'll show you a few things. But keep it softer in the front, more brushwork, more of the flat of the brush into the back. And you can also use your bristle to do some of that, okay? All right, we'll come back. Thank you.
Okay, everyone. So what I did was, and I think you saw that I worked, and even worked some dark in here, and a little bit of light refraction makes it kind of look like water. Put in some posts, put in some more sky holes in between, getting that all ready for some trees and stuff around there. Got a little bit more left to do up and through here, and we have to decide just how much we're going to be bringing this. Up. Matter of fact, maybe we'll decide that. Before now, we haven't used any white. Now you can see how messy my palette is here. Not messy, it's creative. Let's take a little bit of our brown and blue here, some of that medium white, and let's lighten that with just a bit of white. Just a bit. Now, I'm probably going to put a little extender or even a little open medium into this because that'll help keep it transparent. So it's not pure white. You can look at that here. In fact, I'm not even up to the medium white. Let's lighten right back. Not just a little bit closer. Let's oops, go open medium here. Got a little blue in there, a little bit of brown, a little bit of all kinds of colors. That's just a real nice kind of gray. And I'll wipe some of that extra out of my brush and then we'll just pick up a bit of that and we'll look. Now it's going to dry down too. So we just lightly, lightly, light pressure, just barely touch the surface. Drag that over here over this barn and uh, I hit that window darn it that gives me the opportunity to correct it again here just like that and you just pick up a little bit of your dark here and paint back into that that's I like those edges going back and forth just gives so much interest but now you just you're thinking small, little bits, little bits of color. Model some of that. Light. Now this will dry down. We'll see it in a few minutes what it's going to look like dried down. But leave some of the other streaks from some of the other colors and brush working in there. So this will put a nice light, and I think it kind of brings the the two of them closer in balance here. Yeah, that's a good architectural bit there. Just like that. Now if you get too much, you just take a bit of your dark. Just pull through that again. You know, so on the barn we're pulling a lot of verticals. On the house we pulled a lot of horizontals there. So yeah, that's and we can take a bit of that light, even some of that light gray, we can put a touch of our yellow into that. Here, let's just step over here, tap that in just a bit. And uh, just lightly, here I'll use the chisel. And it'll look like a lot right now, but remember acrylic's dry. I'm only a couple values lighter than what I have here. And acrylic's dry a good um, one value darker. So. I'm only lightening it. It looks like I'm doing it a lot right now, but it's uh, not really a lot. And that's the hardest thing, I think, for beginners and, and some of you that are switching over to acrylics is to learn just how much that dries down. And it is far better, really, to get it too light because then you can just wash a little glaze like I showed you in there's a couple videos on there on just glazing. I showed you a, a couple videos on just how I glaze. And you can do that with a glaze. Let's put a little more architectural look, look into the building here. Just like that. Little taps, little bits. If it gets too much, you can use the flat of the brush. So I use the chisel of it there. If it gets too much, use the flat of the brush here. And just take some of those streaks out a bit and uh, while imparting that light. That looks pretty good. Now, what I'll do... It's just like we did over in the, uh, you know, on that church one, that church lesson. If you haven't watched that lesson, you need to go watch that lesson. We'll start out with some soft greens. And you could use any variety of brush here. I'm just going to use the corner of this one here. And don't avoid your, your little branches. Just kind of push some of this green around. We'll put on this medium kind of green. We'll put on a shadow green. And then we'll put on a light green. That's basically all we need. And make sure you go over some of your tree trunks. Because remember, leaves don't just avoid the tree trunks. So just 
mark some of this down through here. There we go. And, you know, right over some of the, the blues to place them. You know, we'll just mark some of these. Try not, and you see I'm pushing and shoving and scumbling, using the corner, using the flat. Trying not to make a consistent pattern of marks. I want all my marks a little different here. Go push some right over those tree trunks, just like that. Okay, now we'll go to a little shadow, a little green, a little burnt sienna. Touch of blue, maybe a bit more burnt sienna in there, so it's not real powerful, powerful here. Over to this side, a little heavier. Here, this shadow side, a little touch of blue here. Make sure you give it a good dose of shadow. That adds a lot of contrast and it means you don't have to add quite so many lights. Sometimes we get these too light, too flat. So get a good dose of shadow over there. And some over here, lights coming from the front right. So you're doing the back left here. A little bit in the back left. Shove that back there like that and uh, don't forget this go back to my medium here and that's a little bit dark so I just wipe it sometimes that's just a fun the great way to make a tree is just to kind of push that around like that and just take a damp paper towel this is my paper towel I've been wiping with and just tap through it you see you get a great tree that way as well. The biggest thing about them is to not be repetitive, to, you know, don't go do, 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 you know, just make sure you're rotating the brush in your hand to do different things. Here, here we go. That looks pretty good. And, um, We'll add a little bit more shadow. Then we'll do the final lights here. Add a bit of shadow. There we go. And then the lights, we'll just add in some of this Hansa yellow, a little bit of all of our yellows, a bit of green. And this time let's touch into just a touch of that white. And don't mix it up real, real well. We'll model this together here like this. I'm looking for maybe a value up around a six or so. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Right about a six or so here. Yeah, that's just a nice, lively little green. We'll just drag some of that around here. Don't need to go too far into that shadow. We'll just drag. See, I like to just drag it. Just hit those lights there and you can wipe through and smear out some that always looks good and uh, those are big trees too by the way it's above a two-story house so big trees but you know I lived out in California around the redwoods for so many years so I'm used to big trees we had a couple of them that towered so far over probably two and a half times the size of our house. They're huge. Big sequoias. Just tap some of that in there. That looks kind of nice. Let's put a touch of some of that light out here. Maybe that's just a little bush. Let's put a bit of that light right up into the front of this one. There, like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, see how that's dried down there. So you can decide, you know, is that is that enough? Do you want to do some more? Or what it is that you want to do? But, uh, you know, it's a pretty good look. It's, a pre it, it's pretty fun. So this, you know, out of all of this, this one's taking me about 
two hours and 20 minutes or so to paint it so that's not too bad uh, overall with, with a, a nice painting like this and now i'm going to let this dry and i'll probably put maybe a, you know a little bit more with the clouds and when you saw me with the clouds i put just a indication of it i might even just put some mist i just might you know the mist you you've seen me do the mist and stuff like that before but you can just pull that right up over some of the edges of your of your paintings, some of your browns and uh, and and uh, medium whites and stuff, and just use that to soften any areas of your painting. It looks great there, just pulling that through. And uh, but if you want to put some more clouds, you can put that on. Um, I showed you like you know how to do some of it. If you want to make a more powerful cloud, I showed you how to do that in that latest uh, seascape working nose. But what I did with this is real soft. You can see I'm real soft. I just waited for it to dry, then brushed on a little bit of the lighter blue, yellow, and beige, and I mean, excuse me, the blue, the beige, and medium white, and then uh, this softened it with the big brush, a little bit of water into the big brush. That big brush and a little bit of water, once everything starts to dry up, just go over it. It gets that kind of blending look to it that the uh, look of oils and stuff have. So anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun to paint with that. We'll do a lot more of the buildings. Gonna get a lot of requests for buildings and architectural stuff. But uh, I like that just nice and rough and, and you know, get in there, right in there in the front, okay? And uh, don't forget, if you like this build, this this type of painting there, make sure you uh, click, make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave a comment. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, you know, leave a comment. You know, um, we're we're up in our game here and the number of videos we're doing a week, so we'll be able to hit quite a few subjects and stuff. And so, and don't forget, those, I'm going to put some links to our new websites that we're, we're redoing our websites, upgrading, we're upgrading the paint at Simply that's going to host all of the beginning lessons and you know, show you how to work through a lot of this because we have over 500 lessons in Paint It Simply. So go over to the video description and check out those websites. And for those of you that want a little more inspiration, I have we have a website, a gallery website, and we uploaded uh, over 500 photos of some of the paintings I've done over the years. So you can go over to Jansen Art Gallery, just enter the gallery and then click over and you can see some of the available paintings for sale. But then if you just go into the gallery, some of the, the paintings that we have here on display in the Sydney Fine Arts Center and then some of them are in private collections and stuff. So, But you can see we have, we, I think we're up to about 500 photos on there now and you can just scroll through and take a look, find some inspiration, okay? All right, guys, thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next one.